Good evening, this is Architect J.P. Espino, the Digital Architect, and tonight I will be presenting the Digital Architect Startup. This was a presentation I did for Community and Private Practice. Good evening, this is Architect J.P. Espino, the That's Digital the Architect, and tonight I will be presenting the Digital... Yan. Sorry. Yan. Dalawa siyang sabay siyang nag, nag play So uh, tonight I will be presenting the Digital Architect Startup. Basically, this is my way of... Um, of starting my architecture business or my architectural firm so i hope this will help you as well uh, a few weeks ago i posted the same this post the the picture the poster of of the digital architect startup in architry and i've asked people if they want me to do this or post this yung recording sa YouTube ko, but uh, unfortunately, I did not, I was not, I was not able to record the original presentation. So, uulitin ko na lang po para sa inyo, since there are a lot of people who requested for it. Hope you, um, you will learn from what I will be sharing. And um, I will also be um, asking some of the Archie tribe to go later to go on this video later to uh, to to show how they did it as well yeah so um without further ado let's continue with this ayan okay so before i go on i would like to uh, reiterate that this is how i do it it's not traditional this is different from what we are used to um but uh i hope i don't know which one to open it but i hope um dahil nga kakaiba ang situation natin ngayon no i hope this will help you as well when we were discussing uh the typical the typical way of um starting an architectural firm I noticed my way of doing it is very different. It's very different from from what we are used to. Um, and it has worked for me. It has worked well for me, especially last year uh, during the pandemic because everything is digital. And But I would also like to... Um, I would also like to be firm that I started... Uh, my architecture business prior to pandemic. So, hindi lang dahil nagka-pandemic or naplano yung pandemic kaya siya nag-boom or kaya ako, um, kaya naging ganun yung setup ko. Um, I set it up differently compared to other architects because of my background as a freelancer. And uh, when I say a freelancer, I mean um, online worker. Meaning, I work mostly online with foreign clients and um serving them with whatever skills i have and i know all of us um has different skills all of us has different specialties and um the way they systematize and organize the the process as well as the um communication as well as the interaction between them as a freelancer and their clients and their let's say partners or, or or co-workers is different from the traditional way that we are used to so i adopted that so um all of us when we started when we took uh bs architecture in college this is what we dream of right to have an, an architectural firm with a team of architects that has the same dream as you so we are all envisioning uh an office or a floor of um computers architects your team so many um, employees or so many colleagues helping you build that yun yung dream natin eh yun yung dream natin na um nasa isip natin malaki yung team ko marami akong junior architects, marami akong draftsman, marami akong engineers, marami akong team that will help me. Um, and of course, the second dream is that 
hopefully we will have notable designs that will become landmarks in the profession in the location they're at and especially in the minds of the people Diba? So, these are the two dreams na lahat tayo pare-parehas as, as a BS architecture student. Di na lang ha, balik tayo sa pagiging studyante. Nung studyante ka, ito yung nasa isip natin. Pangarap natin magkaroon tayo ng sarili natin napahara, napakalaking firm just like probably Luxine or uh, Palafox, di ba? Yun yung ating goal. But, um, it's not that easy. Sabi nga ni Colin Powell, dreams doesn't become reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work. So, um, I'm already in my 40s, actually. And um, I'm still not in that position. And sabihin na natin na um, I do have enough experience, enough um, knowledge to have an architecture firm. And... Um, but mahirap pa din. Mahirap pa rin na magkaroon ka ng napakaraming empleyado. Mahirap pa rin na mag-maintain ka ng opisina. Um, of course, that's still the dream. Pero hindi ganun kadali eh. We have to start somewhere. Uh, not necessarily abutting your dream. Hindi, hindi kasi tayo pwedeng sabihin na ang hirap wag na lang. Or ang hirap hindi ko kaya. So, I work on what I can. I work with, um, with what I have. So kung wala akong ganong kalaking team yet, wala akong napakalaking opisina, I had to start somewhere. And again, as as a freelancer, as an online worker, I know that we could also have a complete team na hindi kailangan gumastos ng malaki on the office, hindi kailangan gumastos ng malaki to have complete um, departments, uh, we can streamline it na parang startup. When we say startup, di ba, ang, te- ang usual application ng startup is with technical companies like mga uh, Google, di ba? They started with um, mga tech. Pero ngayon, siyempre, sobrang laki na nila. Pero usually, the tech companies, they started small as well. In their garage, wherever. Pero, um, konti lang sila but they work with what they have until, yun na nga, they reach yung ganito na kalaki. Now, hopefully, I will also get to that. But kung hindi man, this is how I am going. So, in a traditional setup, kung ikaw yung principal architect, meron ka ng lahat nito. You have a senior designer who handles the, say, architectural. You have HR who handles the employees, hiring, uh, uh, screening, uh, pati yung um, payroll, they're the ones who handle that. Of course, there's also marketing department, purchasing department, engineering department. This is the typical traditional um, organizational chart of an RQ firm. But again, when you go private practice, meaning when you go on your own, set up your own, mag-isa ka lang, eto ka. Kung ako yung principal architect, lahat yan, Marketing, design, purchasing, HR, engineering, IT, lahat ikaw rin. Or you can also hire yung mga contractual. But yung ulo niyan, the way you run it, the way you you um, you manage it, usually ikaw lang lahat. That's why it is very hard. So, paano nga ba? Paano nga ba magsimula to have your architecture firm? Um, balikan muna natin, no? During this pandemic, this is what happened. Medyo malabo yata siya. But this is what happened during the pandemic. Um, there's a lot of changes in the new normal. And you have three things or three facts or three paths that you could go to. First is, kagaya nung na, na sulat sa Time Magazine, um, nakalagay dito yung title niya as COVID-19 crashes, the economy uh, workers and business owners wonder if anything can save them from financial ruin, meaning you could go down, bumagsaka. Or, according to Washington Post, in a um, bleak economy, these companies are flourishing, meaning mas lumakas pa sila. And that's what happened to me last year. Uh, if I was just getting, prior to that, prior to the pandemic, I was only getting two projects to three projects a year, 
last year I was getting up to 10, 15 projects per month. Ganun ka, ano. And so I flourished last year. And and I will I, I'm very honest to say that I'm not handling that much project anymore, no. Um, because I also need to downsize as well. Kasi na Next is uh, this is what uh Forbes posted naman or um published. Their title says how your Medyo malabo siya sa akin. How your blank survives a national crisis or pandemic. So, um, it only shows that there are three ways. Either you you, are, you, you break down, mag-crash ka. Um, one is you survive or you flourish. So, it's really up to us. And I know it's not, it's hard. It's extra hard ngayon. Ngayon na, we're already running the second year of the pandemic. It's extra hard now because lahat talaga naghihirap na, lahat naapektuhan na the, ano, across the globe and across all forms. Either you're an entrepreneur, you're self-employed, you're an employee, you're an employer, small scale ka man, o malaking kumpanya ka man, mahirap ka man, mid ka man, or billionaire ka, lahat affected. Diba? So, um, so it's extra hard now. And I hope this will be able to help you. So first, before we continue, no, I would like to ask, kumusta nga ba kayo? Medyo malabo pala yung lumalabas, no? Um, but pasadahan lang natin to. It only shows na lahat talaga apektado. So ayan, bumagsak na. Um, but now, unti-unti na ulit bumabangon. Marami umutang para makasimula ulit. Marami ang sumusubok. Marami sa inyo ang um, just got your license. So I hope uh, this will be able to guide you to start your own. Kung may nawalan man ng trabaho o kung nahirapan mong kumuha ng projects or talagang you're just about to start, um, this will be able to help you with that. So according to the Philippines Dig Digital Economy Report of 2020, this was done by the World Bank, uh, there are three ways that we can cope up now. One is digital reforms. That's why I am showing you this presentation on um, how to start up in a digital manner. Next is, uh, or you could also left, be left behind if you are not using or if you are not leveraging what we have, which is the, the internet usage, yung digital adaptation. And of course, lastly, Philippines should also harness the potential of digital economy. So, babalik tayo na si World Bank na mismo ang nagsabi na digital is the way to go. So, there, these are the things that you could do. You could upgrade the digital infrastructure. So, kung mahina yung internet mo, you can upgrade that. If you don't have a good online presence, then you could start posting or making um, your online presence more stable. Next is, you should also be adept with online transactions. Um, kung hindi ka pa marunong mag GCash, mag-aral ka na. If you are not used to um, online banking, you should also learn that. Um, you should also look into several other options regarding um, digital payment. So I am endorsing Payoneer. Uh, I am their affiliate. So if you want to open your uh, Payoneer account, then I will also be posting a link soon siguro. Or maybe under this video, yeah, I will post a link of Payoneer. Um, and if you use that link to create your Payoneer account, you will be receiving $50 bonus when you reach $1,000. So kapag nakapagpasok na kayo na $1,000 or equivalent to Payoneer, you will get additional $50. So not bad, diba? And ito na, that's what I'm saying, promote digital payments. So according to the study of World Bank, uh, this is what we should be doing. The ability of the private sector to be part of the digital economy. And as architects, uh, we are actually in the private sector. So kung patibayan natin yung digital economy by building up um, small-scale industries like us, kumari, nagtayuhan ng archi firm mo, that's actually helping the whole economy. Next is uh, the, trans the transition to a more digital government. So there are some LGU who are already adapting to this, lalo na kapag complete lockdown, they are already receiving um, yung mga for building permits application online. 
So, nagsisimula na. Next is, um, we should also be able to ride the waves of digital transformation. So, as you know, I'm the one who's been talking about going digital. That's why I do have a book called Architects Going Digital. Diba? And even UAP has already uh, has also, also transitioned. They are already, people are already, yeah, they have updated the uh, Ayapoa payments through the website. And soon, magkakaroon na rin ng online application ng um, yung logbook for the board exam. Okay. So, paano nga ba magsimula? Um, pagkakaalam lang naman natin, the only thing that we need to start our um, architecture firm is this. You have, to you have to pass the board exam. So, take your oath and also get the PRC ID. And then, after that, you should also have a certificate of good moral standing, of good standing with UAP and also a member of UAP and also pay for the Ayapoa. So, that's the second requirement. And third is register in BIR. Yun lang talaga ang kailangan natin. Some would say, kailangan ng DPI, kailangan ng mayor's permit. Um, depende. Depende kung ano yung gusto mong gawin. If you're starting, you can just do this. Ah, kagaya ng ginawa ko, I only applied as a professional. I don't need to process the the DTI. But actually, I do. I do have DTI. Um, I applied it years ago. And ano pa siya? Active pa siya. Hindi pa siya mapapalitan. Or hindi pa siya nakukuha ng iba. Just to be clear, no, DTI is actually just a step for you to reserve your name, your company name. Yun lang siya. Reservation lang siya ng pangalan. Yun lang po ang purpose ng DTI. So, it's different from uh, business permit and it's different from mayor's permit. So, kung tutuusin, napakaliit na bagay ng DTI. And being architects, being a professional, hindi natin kailangan ng DTI. Especially if mag-apply ka as Uh, mag-apply ka sa BIR as a professional. Kasi ladagdag lang naman sa pangalan mo yung dash architect. And then yun na yung OR mo. So technically, hindi natin kailangan ng DTI. But if you want a specific name for your company, yes, apply for a DTI. If you want branding, pari ako, I have the digital architect, you should apply for the IPO. And I did that. I have uh, also applied for IPO for of the digital architect. So depende sa kailangan mo. Um, let's say if you are, if you just want to, um, what's this? if you just want to practice your profession as an architect, then you don't need that. Kasi you can still practice your profession as an architect if you already have this three without the DTI. The mayor's permit, hindi rin kailangan if you are registered under a professional. Kasi yun na yung PTR mo. Yung substitute doon yung PTR mo. Uh, so yeah, doon muna tayo. So, Um, these are the requirements to apply as a professional. I, ako lagi kong sinasabi, lagi kong kwenikwento that this is how I did it. I replied, I applied as a professional only. Meaning, ito lang yung kinailangan, NSO uh, birth certificate, your cedula mo, then you just have to fill out the BIR form, form 1905 or the BIR form 1901. Uh, for self-employed. And then, um, yung PTR, ito yung binabayaran natin sa city. And then, marriage contract if applicable. So, nakalagay dito, it's, it's also in my book, Architects Going Digital. It's on page 32. Yan. So, kung bumili po kayo ng libro, nandito po yung mas complete na information how to do this. Step by step din siya. And then sa previous page, nakalagay dito yung how you will um, register is on page 30 naman of my book. Yan, how to apply in BIR as a professional. Okay, so ito lang talaga yung kailangan natin as an architect no? to start your architectural firm or your architecture practice. Pagpalagay na natin because this is a... Uh, This is a presentation for private practice. Okay. So, ito lang talaga ang kailangan mo. The PRC ID, yung PTR, Certificate of Good Standing, 
and then apply sa BIR, you will get this, yung, ano nga ba tawag dito? Certificate of Registration, and then they will also give you um, authority to print, which is ito yun, authority to print your OR. So, kapag ka nag-apply ka sa BIR as a professional, ito lang yung nalabas. Your name dash architect. I... I decided to do this yung as a professional lang kasi it's easier. Meaning, I don't have to renew my DPI all the time. Uh, mas nabawasan siya ng steps. Mas nabawasan siya ng gagawin. So, um, it's easier for me. Kumbaga, uh, shortcut. Ang gusto mo lang naman is mag-practice bilang architect, diba? And kung yun yung gusto mo, ito lang kailangan mo, you can start na. And they will also give you this, yung Ask for receipt BIR. Andito yun somewhere. Yan, meron ako niyan. Lalagay mo lang din dyan yung name nung company mo and nakapaskil yan dapat sa opisin mo. Yan. So, eto lang naman yung typical na kailangan. But, again, babalik tayo, this is private practice. And when we say private practice, you are setting up your own. Ikaw lang. Um, so, eto ang alam natin, yung kailangan lang natin is architecture license, licensure exam. You just have to pass that. UAP and IOPOA register in BIR. If you're done with this, kala mo tapos na. It's not. Actually, mas mahirap yung kasunod. Mas mahirap to. You also have to know business and management. You also have to know marketing. And also, pinaka-importante is how to manage finances. I must admit, no, managing finances ang medyo hirap ako. So, um, with this, Tatlo pa lang to sa naiisip ko. Ito yung basic. But there's a lot. Marami pang dapat pag-aralan. Yun lang pag-manage ng mga tao is very hard. Especially kung nagko-construction ka rin. I also would like to mention, no? no. Yung um, when we apply as a professional, um, ako design lang talaga yung ginagawa ko. Wala akong construction. So, dito yung start. We have to know business management. We have to know, we have to have a system. Dapat meron ka rin sarili mong organization chart. Dapat alam mo na rin yung, um, yung mga kontrata, yung proseso, how you will explain to your client, yung timeline. And um, I would like to promote that on November 15, architect, architect Angelo Malabana will be presenting uh, something about this. Uh, that will help you. November 15, in Architribe. So this is a private and exclusive webinar for all the Architribe members. Kung hindi ka pa member ng Architribe, I will post the link under this YouTube video and um, register or hindi na kailangan mag-register. Just, uh, no, just join. It's just a, it's a Facebook group. Everybody's welcome to join in. So Angelo, Architect Angelo Malabana will be um, discussing more about that. Wait, I will try to download niya. Meron tayong um, pa-poster about that. Yan. Ito, para ma-promote natin ng maayos. Ipakita ko ng maayos sa inyo. Wait lang. I will share. Isang share lang yata pwede. I will try. Okay. I-remove ko muna to and then I will share Ah, bakit share screen? Hmm, wait lang. Maliit siya sa akin. I will have to change. Share video file. Desktop. Hmm. Hinahanap ko pa siya. As you know, very impromptu, impromptu lagi ang aking mga presentation because I will only just try to find time to do it. Um, ayan, thank you. Ngayon ko lang nakita na nandito pala ang Archetribe. So thank you for joining. CJ is here. Uh, Architect Mao is here. Um, Mac is also here. Ayan, si Architect Angelo Malabana is also here. 
And yeah, and then we also have uh, Melissa Sultan and James Albert Nialeka. Good evening. Inahanap ko yung poster ni Angelo. So I wanna show you guys yung magiging present. Ayan, finally. Na-open ko na. Ayan. Okay. So yun. Um, sinabi ko nga na isang very uh, very important part of starting your art firm is having a sy- having system, having organization, you know. And Angela will be having this. Hi, uh, yeah. Wait, I will have to open in a website para. Magcast siya. Open with... Hmm. Paano ko ba papakita? A-add ko na lang ng... Ngayon din. <laughs> A-add ko na lang agad doon sa aking presentation. Para makita niyo. Sorry, this is live. Kaya. O sige, mamaya na lang. Hindi ko talaga siya ma-add. Naghang pa yata ako. So, let's continue with the presentation na lang muna. Kasi hindi ko ma-add yung poster ni Angelo. Again, that will be on November 15. Ayun, finally, sharing. Can you see it? Yun! Finally. So there. Um, on November 15, 8.30pm, architect Angelo Malabana will be showing us yung introduction to architectural practice. Um, he will be discussing mostly about contracts, um, Uh, organization, system, mga ganon, yung kailangan natin about business and management. So that's November 15, 8.30pm with architect Angelo Malabana um, of ACOS Architectural Services. This is an exclusive webinar in Architribe. So kung hindi pa po kayo mem- member ng Architribe, sali na kayo ng Architribe so you can join this webinar. That's 8.30pm. Please don't miss it. Ako po, matagal na akong arkitekto but I still learned a lot from Angelo at isashare niyang lahat yan sa inyo for free on Monday, November 15, 8.30pm Introduction to Architectural Practice with Architect Angelo Malabana. Yan. Yun. Finally. Ang hirap na hirap akong maghanap nung ano, kung paano siya ishare. So let's continue. That is Part 1 of starting your archi firm. Yours is a startup. So systems, business management, part of that is also being professional. Diyan papasok yung mga contracts. Diyan papasok yung mga forms you will be sharing with you guys. And also, um, it's also important that you adapt to what your business needs, to what your um, clients needs. And also to what your environment, hindi lang environment eh, whatever is happening, di ba? Parang now we are in a pandemic and uh, medyo mahirap to meet personally. So you also have to adapt to the digital environment. And lastly, set goals. Without setting goals, hindi nyo alam ano yung ihihit nyo na target. Di ba? Um... Kung magsisimula ka pero mas kipaps lang, bahala na ano mangyari bukas, um, it's going to be hard to flourish or it's going to be hard to really make it. ba? Diba? Kasi wala eh. Kung magasuntok sa buwan lang, hindi hindi mo sa pinano, wala kang, wala, kang, um, wala kang guide on where you are going. So these are the things that at least for me, is important in business management aspect of setting up your own startup. Systems, being professional, adapt to whatever is happening, and also set goals. Again, yung systems and uh, professional professionalism, 
will be um, part of Angelo Malabana's um, webinar on November 15, 8.30 p.m. Uh, in Architrive. Next. So, I also touch up a little bit on this in my book. This is in... Um, Chapter, let's get, chapter 5, let's get the ball rolling. Page 94. Buksan natin ngayon. Page 94. Ayan. So, ayan. This is the chapter. Let's get the ball rolling. From page 94. First part is connect to your market. Building trust and credibility. Um, standards of service is in here your formula and I also have included some of the forms that I am using but you may change it and also adapt to what you think works well for you lagi po yan nagbabago even now uh, because of the help of our architect Angelo no, um, I'm also revising my uh, my contracts yeah so this is uh, the, it also has your proposal as your contract and what should you have in your proposal is already is also in here um, some templates some forms uh, I also have a template of non-disclosure non agreement architects liability um a template of my design contract which is i am changing so i think i need to update my book uh i also have agreement for additional design condition for architect's fee ah marami pa so marami pong laman itong libro ko so as mentioned systems is what we need to have a steady workflow so that we have a guide on um ano yung magiging proseso and then being professional is very, very needed. So we should have contracts, proposals. We have to set everything in black and white. That's why the chapter is called, um, I ne, meron akong chapter na called, ano, parang do it in black and white. Yon, meron akong chapter na ganun. And then also adapt, to, adapt with necessary skills. If you need to learn how to do CAD, if you need to learn how to do 3D rendering, do that. If you need to learn how to talk, communicate with your clients, do that. So there are so many things pa na pwede natin i-adjust. Next is set the goals, which is already mentioned in, in detail previously. Okay. So um, next part is marketing. I would say ito yung niche ko, yung marketing. So lagi kong sinasabi sa lahat ng workshop ko is the number one rule of marketing is to have the right offer. Put it at the right place right time and put it right in front of your target people or, or your target market ito yung number one room of marketing not just digital marketing but the whole marketing so um these are the things that we have to get right and this is um dahil nga more on marketing ang niche ko medyo maraming part nito ang laman ng libro so that will be in chapter one planning your business and chapter six to get yourself out there. So, um, I would like to suggest, ito yung mga topics na dinidiscuss namin in Archetribe. So, these are the four things that at least I would like you to uh, focus on when in when it comes to marketing. First is offer clarity. Um, if you want to know more about offer clarity, this is the um, knowing your niche or knowing what to offer or knowing what's your specific service. We talked about this in a previous um, AC call. You can search it in um, Archetrive videos. And it's also in the guides. Next is personal branding. I, lagi ko sila sabi na the, I think the only thing I did right is to call myself the digital architect. Because that started it all. Because I called myself the digital architect, I started um, putting contents about digital marketing, about social media marketing, about anything digital. So, doon ko nanilining sarili ko ang digital uh, onset. That's why now we are doing this the digital architect startup, diba? Since it's still part of the branding. Basically, branding is how you want to be known. Kung gusto mong maalala ka or kung gusto mong maisip ka ng possible client mo, um, ito yung kailangan mong 
ma-focus on, edi yung kailangan nung ma-highlight. Um, the, the goal is for you to be the top of mind in this niche. So let's say if your if your client is like more in the example si Amon no. Amon Kali is a very good example. Um because he has a specific niche with his design style which is brutalism. And with brutalism um pinakita niya na yun doon siya magaling yun yung ginagawa niya and that's what he is known for. And because of that he was also able to capture specific clients na gusto yung design niya. Of course there are people who doesn't like it but there are people who would like it. So, yun yun. Kailangan ma-pinpoint mo muna what's your offer uh, and then mag-coconnect siya sa target market mo. Next is know your market. So, if you have a specific offer or you have specific niche, doon na papasok yung sino yung market mo. Kasi alam mo, let's say, like me, I, I'm doing digital marketing or I'm talking more about going digital. So, my target market are the architects who would like to get to know how to do this how to um to manage your business to to expose your business as a digital platform so doon ko rin na pinpoint na kung sino yung niche ko which are you guys everybody who's watching me now and next is we have to connect it diba balikan natin yung rule rule of marketing is to have the right offer my offer is anything digital Next is put it in the right place. Right place is, of course, digital, which is just for me is everywhere in the social media or everywhere in the internet. So I am on TikTok. I am Facebook. I am Instagram. I am on LinkedIn. I am basically everywhere because that's the digital platform. And then I connected to my target market, which are the architects. And I have, at, at the moment, I already have 36,000 followers. And uh, the Archetype is growing as well. Next is, I put it right in front of my target market, which is you guys. So, that's part two, which is marketing. Next is, eto, dinaanan na natin eh, yung rule of marketing. Next is, um, if you already know your niche, uh, eto yung dadaanan mo rin na proseso. No? Um, this is what we call the buyer's journey. Before, ang pinag-uusapan lang natin is pag nirefer ka, directa na yun. Kumari, nirefer ka ng mom mo sa kumari niya. Direkta na yun. Hindi mo na kailangang kausapin sila. Nandito na agad sila sa consideration or purchase. But being digital, being on a digital platform, you have to go through this. Or in the digital age, you have to go through this. Not necessarily on the platform. So it, it starts with awareness. Ito yung nagpo-post ka lang pero hindi ka pakilala. Next is, um, nung nag-post ka, naging interesado sila sa pinost mo. Kaya nag-like na sila ng post mo. So, doon na pumasok yung interest. Next is consideration, meaning binabrowse na nila yung page mo if you have gone. And susunod na nun yung purchase. Kung binabrowse ka na nila, kina, um, interesado na sila sa'yo, um, next step na nyan is mag-inquire na sila. And of course, lastly, the post-purchase is you have to take care of the clients. Diba? So, ito yung, ito yung nasa sa'yo na to kung paano mo gagawin. So, that's the buyer's journey. So we start with attract, and then convert, close, and then delight. Oops, wait lang na wala. So next part of the startup or, or your archifirm is, you already mentioned business and management. Next is marketing. Next is managing finances. And as I mentioned, mahina ako sa managing finances. In fact, CJA nag-handle ng financial. Lahat ng finance namin. So, um, ito lang siguro yung maisasuggest ko. No? You always have to have records on everything. So, um, from the time na gumawa ka ng proposal, hanggang sa nag-close yung deal, hanggang sa nagtuloy-tuloy na yung kontrata nyo, keep a good record of it. Diba? Next is, if you can't, gaya ko, dahil hindi naman ako magaling dito, Hire a professional. Um, for me, uh, instead of hiring a professional, uh, I got Taksumo. Taksumo is an, an application and a website. They help me with my um, with my taxes. So all I have to do is register in Taksumo, and then meron na ako dun sa dashboard. I will input actually. Jaya inputs the 
incoming and outgoing, meaning yung income and the expenses. And then, um, si Taksumo, naka-direct connect na to sa BIR. Meaning, whatever is your record in BIR, kasi nakakonect lang naman yan sa TIN mo eh, di ba? Sa tax identification number mo. Makikita na yan ni Taksumo. And si Taksumo rin yung magsasuggest sa'yo when yung mga tax deadlines and si Taksumo na rin yung magko-compute ng mga taxes mo. So, that's how I did it. That's a lot easier for me. And if you need more information or more explanation regarding your taxes, um, meron din silang in-house accountants. You just have to um, ask, chat lang yun. And then, or you could also schedule a meeting with their accountant. So, um, yeah, so I'm also an affiliate of Taksumo. If you want to create your own Taksumo account para mas madali ang pagpapayan ng taxes mo, online ko lang din ginagawa yan. So, si Taksumo yung magsasabi ng kung kailan yung tax, kung kailan ako dapat magbayad, then, then lalabas na doon yung magkano, paano ko babayaran or magkano yung babayaran ko. I'll just have to click a button, then connected na siya sa aking, um, sa aking bank account magbabayad na siya online lang din sa Taksumo tapos magpiprint yung ITR ko and i-confirm na yon ng BIR. Ganun po kadali sa Taksumo. So, if you want to use Taksumo for your um, taxes para mas madali, I think um, they have different packages, no? It starts with 300 pesos. Yung 300 pesos yung kunwari talagang nag-close down ka ngayong pandemic and you just have to file no income. 300 pesos lang yun para hindi ka ma-charge ng mas malaking penalties. So, wag po kayong matakot mag-register sa BIR kasi may mga new RK na natatakot mag-register kasi iniisip nila, maliliit lang naman yung projects ko, baka malag laging malaki yung babayaran kong tax. No, kinocompute naman yan. And as long as you put everything, yun nga, keep records, ilagay mo lahat ng records, hindi din ganun kalaki yung taxes kung i-declare mo lahat ng expenses mo. Kasi nakakalimutan i-declare yung mga ibang expenses like the internet, yung meral ko, minsan hindi nyo yung dine-declare kaya tumataas yung tax nyo. Or baka yung mas mahirap na tax bracket yung pinuha nyo. Kasi papipilian ka sa BIR eh. Kung ano yung mas okay sa yon na tax tawag doon, parang tax schedule. Yung sa akin yung 8%, yung para sa freelancer. Yun yung kinuha ko. It's a lot easier. Quarterly lang yung pag-file. Quarterly and isang annual. Tapos, mas madali siya. Kasi nga, nasa takso mo na rin ako. Yun. So, if you want uh, to also use taksumo for your taxes, or it's free to join. Kung hindi pa kayo magpa-file ng tax, pwede kayong gumawa ng account nyo for free just to get you to it. Um, punta lang sa taksumo.com, create your own account, is free. Tapos, kapag magpa-file ka na ng tax, yung magpa-file ka na ng ITR, uh, yun lang yung magkakaroon ng charges. Pero ako, dahil gusto ko mas madali yung buhay ko, naka-register na ako sa kanila. So, lahat nung, nung perks, lahat nung yung, yung scheduling, yung pagko-compute ng, ng taxes ko, kasi sila na rin yung nag-check if, if ever there's an error, uh, nandun na, madali na for me. Tapos, yun nga, pagka, i-remind ka naman niya eh, kung kailan yung tax pipindutin mo lang yung button, just click a button there dun sa website, and then tatanungin niya ulit yung laman nun, tapos isa pang button ulit, and then you're filing your tax na. Pagka-file nun, magbibigay siya ng confirmation na nabayaran mo yung tax mo, tapos isesend din niya sa email yung actual copy ng ITR mo. So, it's very easy. Again, if you wanna join Taxumo, I have an affiliate code. Use Digital Architect. One word, digital architect, all small letter, and you will get 10% off when you um, when you join Taksumo. Okay, so that's taksumo.com. My promo code is digital architect. You get 10% off when you join. Um, more information about this in my book, page 32, chapter 2, making it black and white. Sleeping lang natin. Page 32. Yeah. So, this one is how to register as a profession. Business regist registration for professionals. Um, paying taxes. 
And ang mismo nagsulat po nito is the CFO of Taksumo, which is a contributor in my book, Miss Ginger Arboleda. Yan, sa po yung may-ari ng Taksumo. Yeah. And um basahin natin. I am a, uh, I am a full-time entrepreneur. I am the co-founder and COO of a tech startup called Taksumo that helps small business owners, freelancers and professionals prepare file and pay their taxes. I am the CEO of my own single proprietorship business, Manila Workshops, and um, which provides a venue for people to continuously learn and aspire for their professional or personal goals in life. I mentor small business owners and startups occasionally. Lastly, I am a professional blogger and I write about my journey as mommy and entrepreneur. So, so Ginger Aboleda is one of the contributors and she is also the COO of Taksumo and CEO of Manila Workshops. Next is um, keep it realistic. So it is very important that you have a clear mind of what is within your budget. So um, kaya nga tinuturo ko tong TDA startup kasi ito yung streamlined way of putting up your business. Mas madali siya, mas simple siya. Instead of um, hiring um, accountant, you can use Taksumo. Instead of um, renting a space for your office, you can just do um, katulad ng ginagawa ko work from home. Instead of filing everything, all the business permits and everything, um, you can just register as a professional in BIR and you're already legal and you can start creating and your, your RK designs and also promoting your business. So um, that's the part of managing finances. So, babalik tayo in the end, dreams doesn't come, doesn't become reality through magic. It takes wet, determination, and hard work. So, uh, these are the three components of the additional way on how we can do a startup as an architect. No? So, medyo pina-streamline ko siya, pina-simple ko siya, uh, again, depende naman to kung gaano kalaki yung gusto mo. If you do have the money, then yes, go ahead. If ang target mo are corporations, big companies, maybe this kind of startup will, is not applicable to you. Baka kailangan mo yung may SEC registration, yung merong DTI, yung mayor's permit, yun. And again, architect Angelo Malabana will be discussing more about that on Monday, November 15th. So, um, dito sa aking um, webinar, meron siyang pros and cons, but I was just skip through it. Dito lang tayo so how to start. So, for you to start, you just have to decide on your branding or your niche. Pabalik tayo, meron yan sa libro. So, decide on your branding, decide on your niche, and if you do have that, proceed to... Create your digital presence. Just like what I did, I created my TDA account on the Facebook and I started showing people what I'm doing, showing people the value of the profession. Next is um, use your social media intentionally, which is what I've been doing. And uh, message ko lang ang isa ko pang special guest. Send ko lang ang aking um, invite link. Again, sorry, this is impromptu. So, mabilisan lang. Yeah. Use your social media intentionally. So, as you will see in the Archetribe, makikita mo na... Um, Archetype is a group of architects helping architects. So um, you will see in the Archetype that we are using our social media intentionally by actually helping other people. That's the goal. And by doing that, <coughs> we are actually promoting ourselves and as well as the value of the professional as well. And, ay, hindi, iba yung kiniklik ko. And lastly, wala yung ayan, yun, yan. and lastly 
step four, hindi pa pala to last, may isa pa. Uh, step four is learn, learn, learn. Meaning, you don't stop there. You don't stop with just start uh, registering your business. You don't stop by creating a Facebook page. You don't stop by um, posting a few contents. No, um, You should also continue learning. So I have two guests with me. Uh, we have architect Anjo Malabana and as well as Mex San Diego who will be sharing the the what they know because diba kailangan level up pa din that's why meron dito learn 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 and if you want to learn more you must learn a few more skills to add to your credibility to add to what you can do and lastly take action so ito ang mga taong um, i could say are really good in taking action so i would like to welcome in the stream Mex San Diego, medyo wala pa yatang um, wala pa yatang camera si Andrew. Remove ko lang to. Yan. Good evening, Mex. Hi, magandang gabi. Hello. Ayan. Kunin ko lang ng background ko. Medyo Okay lang yan. Ganun prepared. talaga kapag ano. <laughs> so, ako din naman, 'di ba? Good evening, Mex and good evening, good evening architect good evening. Andrew Malabana. Hello, um, good evening. First, um eto kasi yung nire-request nila. I hope uh, I was able to um, help them by showing them what I did in starting my art firm or the private practice. But then again, na-mention ko kayo parehas. Andrew will be um, discussing more about systems, professionalism, contract, the startup as well of architecture. Uh, would you like to talk more about that, Andrew? Um, actually, yung sa Monday, um, medyo ang focus natin is yung professional practice, kung ano inaral natin ng college, plus kung paano siya ina-apply in actual. So it's more of an interpretation of ano yung nakasulat sa standard professional practice na inaral natin. Tapos, i-interpret lang natin. Tapos, ito try ko siyang i-discuss in layman's term. Kasi siyempre, nung after natin graduate and nung nag-apprenticeship tayo, uh, hindi kasi lahat na, kumbaga, may kanya-kanya tayong focus nung after graduation eh. Maraming napunta sa um, firms na nag-drafting sila, yung iba naman nag-design sila, and then yung iba nag napunta sa construction, tapos yung iba napunta sa quality control. So, sa lahat ng experiences no after graduation, um, siguro very minimal lang yung ano, yung dumiretso sa freelancing. Kung dumiretso man sila sa freelancing, um, nag-start sila with um, designing, so visualization, etc. And sobrang kukonti lang yung nag-focus dun sa um, application nung professional practice in terms of documentation, contracts, at saka sa mga legal side ng architecture. So on Monday, uh, I'll try to discuss yung mga yun. Uh, of course, ito based to on SPP, um, based to dun sa mentor ko, and then based din to sa experiences ko and kung paano ko siya in-adapt sa actual practice. So, yun. So, yun yung i-discuss ko on Monday. So, of course, nandun na rin yung ano, um, yung sa part na rin yung code of ethics at saka paano ba tayo, kung, kung paano ba natin ipipresent yung sarili natin sa client. So, yun. So, nandun. So, anything na about being a professional, i-discuss natin siya sa, sa Monday. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Saktong-sakto. Kaya, kaya ginawa ko na itong video na ito tonight. Eh. Dahil alam ko, uh, it would also highlight what's to come in the next few days or on Monday. Highlighting naman what you will be presenting. And of course, ito naman yung kay Mech. Yan, Mek, 
ikaw na nga ang uh, of course I would like to welcome again Max and Rego. He's kung nakikita nung isa sa pinaka ano din yan, BC at pinaka masipag mag-post on Architrain. Yan. Ay. Ano ko ba siya? Yeah. Mac, go ahead please promote your master class. Uh, hi, magandang gabi. Hi, parang Anjo. Hi, JP. Hello. Uh, 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 para sa akin na uh, sa Monday, abangan nyo yung kay Anjo kasi sobrang marami kayong matututunan talaga. Hindi kami kahit, kahit 11 years na akong nag- nasa architect. Kaya baka mag-expect naman sila. <laughs> Dito to, 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 kahit ako nung ano, yung, marami pa nung lalo na sa legality sa skin, sobrang ano talaga. Uh, yung, actually, yung iba parang yung natutunan ko sa'yo, ano, parang 70% uh, ano eh. First hand ko natutunan lahat eh, kasi madalas siya eh, employee nga dahil hindi ka naman na-expose sa mga ganun, di ba? Tapos nung nag-ano lang din, tawag dito, nag-freelance nag, nag lang, doon lang para nag-ano na idea. Pero hindi pa talaga ganun, ano, talagang master. Tapos dumating ka. <laughs> so, uh, talagang ano. Uh, basta uh, invite ko kayo dun sa Monday talaga as in. Uh, marami kayo matututunan. Tapos yung sa ano naman, yung sa November 20 naman, uh, magkakaroon ako ng uh, master class. Uh, 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 limited slots lang to 25, so parang yung, yung gusto ko lang talaga yung eager lang talaga yung mapag-enroll para uh, yung uh, uh, matutukan. Tapos magkakaroon, uh, yung mentor ko sila, uh, kung mag- sa magkaroon sila ng client, uh, magkakaroon kami ng mga sariling easy namin. Tapos parang uh, ituturo ko din kung paano maging on par sila sa mga professor pagdating sa rendering. At saka yun din, isasama ko rin yung ano, uh, how to get clients uh, mindset at saka After nun, magkakaroon pa ng ano, webinar uh, uh, with GPSP. Ayan. Okay. Um, masyado kasing humble to si Mick. Hindi niya ikinikwento yung alam namin about him. <laughs> so ako na magkikwento. Sandali, hahanapin ko lang. Um, actually, feel off muna to. Ayan. Actually, Mick San Diego is one of the um, founders. Sabi na natin, who started Architribe? And uh, isa rin siya sa so nakikita niyo naman na napaka-active into posting and also helping you guys. In fact, there's a lot of wins na ng mga Architribe members only because they happen to message Mac and ask them for the uh, and ask them na mag-guide sila ni Mac. So, yung masterclass ni Mac, yes, nakalagay dyan is architectural visualization, but it's not going to be about that. Yung nakalagay na bonus na sinasabi ni Mac na mindset setting and everything, yun talaga yung mas importante doon. Um, he was able to help a lot of others to create their wins. Uh, kaya makita nyo sa mga post laging, thank you Mac. Thank you, Architribe. Um, isa po dyan, si Jem. <clears throat> She's also my mentee now. Actually, dapat mag-thank you rin ako kay Mek kasi si Mek din yung nag-endorse sa kay Jem na maging mentor niya ako. So, in isang araw lang, um, when we opened <coughs> the Architribe, si Jem actually nag-message siya kay Mek. Right? And from there, ginaid ni Mek ano yung gagawin? Can you, can you share, Mek, paano yung naging usapan nyo and ano yung naging results noon later on? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Actually, patulog na ako noon nag-message siya. <laughs> Talaga nagpapantok na ako noon nag-message siya. Tapos, basta di ako noon yan, yung mga kailangan gawin yung process, yung paano mag-reach out the client, lahat. As in, talagang ano, Uh, actually, nag- nagising ako doon, so, so siyempre parang willing, na, willing naman talaga akong tumulong. So lahat, lahat tinanong niya, so ano talaga nakakatawa naman kasi eager talaga. So binigyan ko lahat ng kailangan niya kasi nakita ko naman ng eager. So, sabi ko ito yung mga kailangan mong gawin, mag-reach out ka, i-message mo. Huwag kang matakot, huwag kang mag-overthink lahat, lahat na pwede mong gawin. Kasi kung mag-overthink ka, wala wala kong ano ang gagawin kasi mag- ano ka lang, mag-wonder ka lang, di ba? Mas okay na mag-fail ka kagad at alam mo yung dapat mong gawin pagkatapos. So yun, parang magandang balita, kinabukasan, nag-launch agad siyang dalawang project, wala pang 24 hours after niya sumali. Parang kinabahan ako kasi lahat nung tinuro ko sa kanya, shortcut, simula, hindi ko na, ano, parang sinabi ko na sa kanya lahat nung dapat niyang iwasan. So sobrang shortcut, pati yung pagkakuha niya ng project, shortcut din eh. Wala pang 24 hours. So congrats kay Jim. Congrats kay Yon, so that's just one of the magic ni Max San Diego. And bukod doon, he will be also teaching the masterclass nga, yung architectural visualization that he's very good at. At doon din siya kumikita ng malaki ngayon. 
um, he will be teaching that on November 20. We will repost yung registration ng kanyang masterclass ngayon sa Archetype. So, wag nyong kaligtaan. Wag kayong mag-miss out kasi eh, napakagandang opportunity yun. And again, yung November 15 naman with Architect Angelo Malabana, more on professional practice, how to start your architecture uh, business as well. Pero sa prof professional practice side, yung ipapakita ni, hmm. ni Angelo. So, there. Pero add ko lang, add ko lang dun sa Monday. Baka kasi sobrang mag-expect sila. So anyway, uh, brief background. So hindi naman ako anak ng kung sino ang sikat na architect or anything. So wala talaga akong background or some sort. Pero I hope it it makes you, kumaga, I hope it's reassuring na someone like me na hindi naman kilala or wala naman, I mean, I mean, malabong magkaroon ako ng... Mm -hmm. I mean, malabong magkaroon ako ng award sa architecture kasi yung practice ko kasi is hindi naman talaga more on the design aspect. So more on the um, legal side of architecture. Pero I hope on Monday, um, you can learn yung mga basic kung paano ba, una, syempre, of course, paano ba maningil? Kasi lagi nating dilema yung paniningil. Eh. So, it's one of the things na I want to emphasize is kung paano maningil on, on Monday. And then, bakit ba kailangan natin i-push yung sinasabi ng professional standard practice? Kung bakit ba natin kailangan, actually, it's sad to say na kailangan pa natin i-push yung something na dapat deserve natin as an architect. So on Monday, na dun, oh, nakasulat na doon eh. Minimum basic fees 10%. Pero when we all started, parang nagsimula tayo na hiyang-hiya tayong sigilin yung 10%. Mm -hmm. And para bang hindi natin deserve yung 10%. So on kapag, Monday, kapag, ano, kapag nagsabi tayo, no, nagkakamot ba tayo? Ano po? Oo, oh, parang <laughs> ano, <laughs> ang hiya, diba? So on Monday, I'll share with you guys kung ano ba yung mga dapat nating sinasabi or ano dapat yung hindi natin sabihin and bakit importante na ipu itulak natin yung minimum basic key natin. So ano bang at stake dito? Um, yung careers ba natin? Yung future ba natin? O yung future ng mga susunod sa atin? So in yeah. Archetribe, um, sabi nga namin lagi, um, 10 years ago, nasa yung Archetribe? So I think ito na yung gusto kong i-share on Monday. So, kung ano man yung hinahanap ko 10 years ago, gusto ko siya i-present dun sa mga gusto mong magsimula ngayon. So, yun lang naman. So, yun. Huwag kayong mag-expect ha na grabe sobrang galing ko or anything. Pero again, if it works for me, I'm pretty sure kung sobrang galing nyo sa pagde-design, it would definitely work for you. So, yun lang Napaka-humble naman kasi ng dalawang bisita ko, si Meg at saka si Adjo, no? Um, and don't worry about that, Angelo, kasi I think mas marami yung Pilipino, mas marami yung arkitekto, mas marami yung archigrad, mas marami yung archi student who doesn't have the money, who doesn't have the network, who doesn't have the guts, yeah. di ba? To really, ano yun, to... to para na makipagsabayan sa mga malalaking arkitekto, sa mga star architects. And we are here, Archetype is here to help you guys na pwede, na kaya. Hindi porket wala tayong apelidong luksin o hindi porket hindi tayo nakapag, uh, o, o wala tayong mga amigo o amigang mga mayayaman o wala tayong maraming pera hindi ibig sabihin nun is hindi natin kaya makipagsabay sa Star Architects. So, um, I think a lot of people will resonate on our experience and hindi naman natin sinoshow ito o hindi naman natin uh, ginagawa, yung ginagawa natin sa Architry because we're saying we're better than you or mas magaling tayo. We are simply sharing our experiences and hopefully some or more or a lot of you will be able to also resonate with that and learn from our own experiences. Lahat tayo may matututunan sa bawat isa. Lahat tayo may maitutulong. 
uh, it doesn't matter kung tenured architect ka na ng 40 years na na nagpa-practice or archi student ka na nagsisimula pa lang malaman kung ano ang architect ar architecture. May matututunan kami sa inyo, may matututunan ang bawat isa sa inyo. That's why we call the Archetype Architects Helping Architects. So again, maraming salamat, Anjo, Architect Anjo Malabana. You, again, that will be November 15. Um, yung uh, webinar niya, exclusive webinar inside Archetype, November 15, Monday, 8.30 p.m. Please don't miss it. And also, si Mex San Diego on November 20, um, Architectural Visualization Masterclass with Mex San Diego on November 20. Konting-konting slots na lang yung open. So, kung gusto nyo rin kumita ng dolyares, ng mas madaling panahon, um, si Mex po ang tutulong sa inyo dyan. Have a good evening, everybody. Bye! Bye! Good evening!